Say band in your mind. Keep helping it to go all the way. And the reason I can do it that way is because I'm psychic. Right! Correct. As a scientist, I can't help feeling we seem to have lost our reason and gone mad. Not only are we turning our backs on science, we're embracing the world of anti-science. Everywhere you turn now, there are psychics, astrologers and paranormalists offering tin pot comforts for those who need reassurance. The paranormal is taking over newspapers, TV schedules and now apparently the high streets. You might think it's all a bit of a giggle. Well, I don't. It not only purveys a view of the world which is false, but it's also impoverished, poverty-stricken. People who believe in it, and I've seen some of them in that shop, credulous, gullible people, are missing so much. I think the paranormal needs to be debunked, and I know just the man to do it. Give him a big hand. Okay. Ian Rowland is a psychic illusionist. He entertains audiences like this one at a London Students' Union, with phenomena of the kind regularly passed off as paranormal on TV shows. Any sleight of hand or any trickery whatsoever. Watch. Just look at this. Say bend in your mind. Keep helping it to go all the way. He trained as a conjurer and won't tell exactly how he does his tricks. Degrees, yeah? You see this clearly? Okay, and we want it to do But he's absolutely clear about one thing. I don't have any psychic or paranormal abilities whatsoever. Uh, I always state this quite clearly at the beginning of a show. Now and again, somebody wants to uh, argue the point and make out that I really am psychic, but I'm pretending not to be. But the honest truth is, I'm as psychic as a teapot. <laughs> What I, I try and do is say that I can reproduce in my shows any kind of psychic or paranormal effect whatsoever. From mediumship, spoon bending, fire walking, ESP, clairvoyance, predictions, whatever. So far, anything that I've seen a, a so-called genuine psychic do, I've been able to do just as well, I think, in the shows that I do. Like this, in which the blindfolded Ian has to find a member of the audience and stab a knife through the sign he's holding. For directions, he pretends to read this student's mind. No, if I get a reaction like that, I can hear and it's a giveaway. Please try your best not to flinch or move. Tracy, if you would just carry on, forward, left, back, whatever. Ah, mm. Can you, can you, just yes or no, can you see where the knife is? Yes. It's now the knife you must guide, not me. I am absolutely and utterly positive there is no such thing as anyone with psychic abilities. You have to understand that this sort of thing has been around for hundreds and hundreds of years and we still haven't found anyone who can demonstrate their so-called psychic powers under common sense, scientifically controlled conditions. They can do it in a TV studio, in their homes, on a stage. That's easy. I can do that. But nobody ever has come forward who can demonstrate these so-called abilities under conditions where you preclude the chance for trickery. Some people think that clairvoyance, horoscopes and the psychic charlatans you see on television are harmless because they're just entertainment. The danger is that people will come to take this sort of hocus-pocus seriously, will actually believe in it, and then the danger is that it will undermine or weaken their grasp on reality. I wonder what the reality was for most of the people at this paranormal gathering. They come to be cured by a Brazilian psychic surgeon. He claims to be a medium using the powers of helpers from the spirit world. The psychologist Richard Wiseman went along uninvited and was shocked by what he saw. 
we went along to look at some psychic surgeons that were operating in the middle of London. Now what these people were claiming was that no matter what the illness was, they could make various incisions into the body, release the bad spirits, and the person would get well. We saw 16 people, one after the other, come into the operating room, lay down. He would, uh, they'd have their, their stomachs cut into, not deep cuts, but real cuts, with uh, blood obviously over the surgeon's hands and instruments. Uh, then there'd just be some cotton wool placed over the cut, and they'd be sent on their way. Now, there was absolutely no medical procedures there in terms of, uh, sort of sterilizing the instruments or even washing the hands in between patients. Most of the people were there because they had some kind of serious illness. In fact, a reporter who uh, uh, carried out the investigation with us later found out that two of the people were HIV positive. Now, there is enormous risks, obviously, with um, you know, cutting into those types of people and then using the same instruments on other patients. The bottom is you must believe I was horrified that this was going on in central London in 1995. Um, it seems to me it's an absolutely bizarre and ridiculous ritual that people are opening themselves out to all sorts of illnesses by going there. They're very unlikely to get better. Um, so I think you know, that's a very good example of exactly how dangerous a belief in the paranormal can be. Some patients claimed they'd been cured, but one woman called the police in hysterics and the psychic team were banned from the premises. I think it's tragic when people fall for the specious charms of the paranormal. We scientists are clearly failing people if they think they need answers in the psychic world. I believe that science is still the only way of finding answers to life's mysteries. That's why I write my books. The problem is the demand for 100% certainty. Take one of the most exciting discoveries of recent years, DNA fingerprinting, the achievement of Sir Alec Jeffries. Like so many scientific breakthroughs, it was at once both marvellous and misunderstood. DNA fingerprinting arose in this laboratory by complete accident. I mean, I had no views back in the early 80s, or even thoughts about forensic DNA typing. I mean, it was you know, crazy science fiction. At the time, Professor Jeffries was trying to study variation in human DNA to provide better markers to help scientists study inherited illness and cancer. He developed a technique that used radioactivity to highlight variable regions in the DNA. He knew it would show different patterns for different people, but he was unprepared for just how different those patterns would be. I think it was one morning, Monday morning, in September 1984, and it was a moment of total eureka. I was in the dark room, I pulled this bit of x-ray film